Hello, I'm Sam Barone. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Nanoscope Therapeutics. It's really an exciting time for us at, uh, at Nanoscope. In addition to our MCO10 program and retinitis pigmentosa and Stargardt degeneration, we also have our next generation MCO20 program that is currently in IND enabling status right now. So we're currently working on the studies to support entry into the clinic. We hope to be able to uh, get an IND open with the FDA before the end of the year and then initiate uh, clinical studies shortly thereafter into the beginning of next year. Uh, uh, MCO, uh, their MCO20 program is different from MCO10 program because the MCO10 program uses viral vector delivery while MCO20 uses non-viral vector delivery. So what, those are just different ways for genetic material to get inside cells in the body. So through the non-viral vector delivery in MCO20, the, the genetic material is delivered uh, directly into the vitreous via uh, in, in office intravitreal delivery. And then through the use of a cold laser, a low powered laser, the cells of interest are targeted to be able to increase their permeability and allow the genetic material entry into the cell and to then affect, uh, affect change. The change in this case is the production of a, an expression of an ops, a light sensitive opsin protein that can then initiate the uh, vision signal uh, in relation to ambient light. Uh, because of the use of a laser, we can get exquisite targeting specifically to the uh, cells of interest where we want to get uptake of the genetic material and transfection. Con consequently, we look to use MCO20 in central geographic atrophy from advanced dry AMD. In contrast to therapies that are currently available for dry AMD that are known to slow the progression of the geographic atrophy, MCO20 offers the potential to actually restore vision function that has already been lost because of advanced dry AMD. As I said, we look forward to opening the IND uh, before the end of the year and initiating a study shortly into the early part of uh, next year. You mentioned that the MCO20 compound is activated by a laser. Can you clarify the type of laser that is used and how it is used in the procedure? Like um, MCO10, MCO20 is also an optogenetic therapy. But with MCO10, the, the genetic material is delivered via the use of a viral vector. MCO20 is different because there is no viral vector. The genetic material is injected directly into the vitreous cavity and then with the use of a cold laser or low powered laser, the, cell, the specific targeted cells of interest are treated with the laser to then uh, allow them to uptake the genetic material which leads to the expression of an opsin protein and the uh, sensitivity to light and stimulation of a light signal. It's very important to note that the laser uh, that's used with uh, MCO20, it's a very low power infrared laser that doesn't cause any thermal injury or damage as opposed to other lasers that are used uh, surgically or in the office uh, to treat uh, retinal disease. If the photoreceptor cells are damaged, how does the opsin protein help to restore vision? Uh, the opsin protein that is expressed by the MCO10 treatment is similar to natural rhodopsin in the body, whose job is to capture the light signal and convert it into a uh, electrical neurological impulse that then allow that then leads to vision. Uh, with with optogenetic therapy with MCO10 and MCO20, uh, we are just instead of that process happening into the photoreceptors, which have now been degenerated, it is happening in the in the remaining intact cells of the inner retina, the bipolar cells, who usually don't do that job, but because we are supplying them with uh, the ability to express an opsin protein, then they have the ability to themselves turn into de facto photoreceptors, initiate the neurological impulses that then go across the, the through the optic nerve into the brain and the, lead to the perception of vision. Are you currently enrolling patients for the MCO20 study? MCO20 is currently not in the clinic, but we look forward to initiating the uh, clinical trial and soon, uh, at which time we will be activating uh, clinical trial sites uh, and to uh, be seeking enrollment. Thank you for sitting down with us.
We look forward to hearing of your progress in the future.